we, um, we talk about stories because our life's about stories and everything we do is about stories and we manifest our own stories in life. We manifest our own life into stories. If that's not too complicated. Um, but basically, I'm, 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 everything I do, I'm a storyteller in my life. Um, if you follow everything I've done in my life, it, I, 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 it seems like there's levels of journeys and they're all stories. Uh, and hopefully you put the, we weave that tapestry together and it makes a, a, a nice um, final outcome. But when we talk about stories in theatre and stories in film, we're all creatives and I believe I've got a mixture. I believe I've got a business side and a creative side. And my, my creative side is um, I've written films. I've written theatre. Um, I've been involved in films and theatre most of my life. Um, I started as an actor at a very young age. Um, I, I got myself to my first audition when I was 12 uh, for, a, for an ad and I won the ad. I got the ad and, and then I started doing drama and music classes on my own because I was from ethnic parents who weren't actually into the arts themselves other than I had an uncle who was in films back in, back, back in um, Yugoslavia at the time or Slovenia which was former Yugoslavia. So, but, um, and I learned to tell stories. When we were kids we told stories to each other as, as siblings and that was how we kept ourselves entertained I'm from a family of five. Um, and my arty side, I feel like we, we want to, we, we write about what we want to manifest in, in our lives. Um, I've, we've produced a number of films and in those films, the films that I've actually written, um, at least half of those films in the past, I've written a couple of shows, I don't have much time to write those anymore. But I find that stories that, it's hard to explain, that I actually manifest my life from the stories I create within my own head and we manifest everything we do day to day. There's a business in show business and a lot of us don't understand it. I, I still after, after 35, 40 years don't understand the business of show business sometimes, but people, young people need to understand that there is a business in show business. No money, no play. It's as simple as that. How do we get the money? We have to understand. And once we've got the money, how do we make it work? So we can, everyone forgets about the investor. And for years I've produced big shows and sometimes we've lost money on shows. And uh, there's always that guilt, oh my God, how do I tell the investor he's lost all his money? Most of the investors you get into theatre shows nowadays are people who can afford to lose money. You, you tell them, you, you, you explain to them, this is it's a risky investment. Most theatre is a risky investment. There's a, always a couple of short things. There's a couple of shows you know that you've put them on, they're gonna do, they're gonna do really well. Book of Mormon shows like, you know they're gonna make lots of money. They, they're gonna, uh, the um, Hamilton's coming up. And that's just phenomenal. I mean, I, I saw it just recently again in New York. And, uh, and I, first of all, I went, first time I went there, I thought, what's all this hype? On a music? What's this hype on out? This is ridiculous. I'll, I'll buy it. And by the way, the ticket was $780 online and $340 for the booking fee. So the average Hamilton ticket now is $480, which I think is excessive for any theatre show. I don't think you should, anyone should be paying that sort of money. But they're, they're, they're selling 107% house a week. That means they're selling standing room 7% every week and they turn over three and a half million dollars a week just on one show. But Hamilton, I sat there and I thought oh, I started and I didn't want it to end. I was actually, I was actually, can I explain, I was actually in awe. I just sat there just, I was, you almost want to cry because it's a new level of theatre. There's a new benchmark. When Les Mis first came out, Les Mis hit me there and went, wow, this is fantastic. And then Hamilton came out and then that's after 20 years, that's the new benchmark in theatre. So the re reason for theatre was to create, to put it, produce my own works. I'm actually very busy in other forms of work of, of my other business as well, but I try to share as much time as I can here for my love of the arts, and that's to produce shows that I love and that I want the community to see, or other people within our group love and want people to see. We produce shows often that people don't do, you, couldn't, you wouldn't do anywhere else, because they're not commercially viable. I mean, we, 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 I, did, um, uh, I did Bad Juicy, which was, a, which was a, a, a Broadway hit, number one hit, about five years ago, and three and a half years ago we staged it here. Bad Jews, if, if the MTC staged it, it would have cost them one and a half million. We staged it for 240,000 and made money on it. And that's because it's more economical to do it in this way than to, do, to, to put it into a bigger theatre in, in a bigger organisation. They might have made some money on it, don't, I don't know, but the, the ticket prices would have been $150, $200 or whatever the MTC is now, I think it's $160 a ticket, top ticket. But our ticket price, top ticket price, even in Bad Jews was $65. And our, and our average ticket price was $44. So a family of four can get out for $150, $160 to see a, 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 a first class Broadway production. Most of our shows, we, 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 did, um, we did Charlie Brown and here and, and the musical, and we were the first to do the full professional version of Charlie Brown here. And we were selling, we were giving away tickets. That, it was a full pro show. And we did the Broadway version, and it was a family of four for $120. 
So we're trying to make affordable theatre that anybody can come and see. Saying that the next level of, this, of the theatre is to make it interactive. We're looking at doing interactive shows. They're not just theatre. Um, we're looking at, we're, we're trying to get the rights of a show where the actual people are sitting inside the show. And that's, um, uh, and that's Sweeney Todd. That, that, that's um, Steve Sondheim's Sweeney Todd. So you actually sit inside the barber shop. And so when, so when, the, and you actually see that. So when, when they're killing people and cutting their throats, they're dragging them across your table, and you actually get beer and and a pie, you know, probably not with human remains in it, but a beer and a pie. So we're trying to go to the next level of interactive theatre and theatre that's um, more importantly more accessible to the general public, cost-wise, and that's what's important for us is to make sure theatre is accessible to the public, cost-wise, and that's hence why the Alex was born. And from then it's born different. It goes to many different avenues. We own a film company. We just fin finished. We're in, the, we're in the throes now of a post-production for a major film. But the next one we're shooting, we could probably use the studio end on end for shooting film scenes in because it's cost effective for us to be here because it's ours. So there's lots of things we can do here. And we put the cinemas back in. We actually put the projection screens back into this building so we can actually show films. So if it's not a, if it's not a theatre, it's a cinema. If it's not a theatre, cinema, it's, it's a place where you can have corporate events. There's many things we can do with this theatre, as you know. Mm -hmm.